Hello, welcome to this afternoon's session uh, about SolidWorks Composer with me, David Durston. So, what is SolidWorks Composer? Well, it's a, a tool which enables you to take your SolidWorks CAD data and turn it into uh, more interesting things. For example, we've got manuals, we've got marketing images, training and instructional videos, ordering assistance on bomb pages, and these could be on the web or these could be uh, local to your system. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to jump into SolidWorks Composer and we're going to go through making some of these items up. So SOLIDWORKS Composer starts by loading in all of your SOLIDWORKS CAD data uh, and translating it into uh, a Composer format. Now I've already done this for this particular model because it can take a little while when there's a lot of uh, data going on. Once we've imported it we then start putting together a whole load of views. So I've got uh, my first view set up on screen here and then I've got a couple of camera views set up as well so that I can return to them later on as I go through the process. So we're going to now start creating some more views which we're going to use later on to produce some of our outputs. So I'm going to move to this uh, save camera view and I'm also going to uh, remove the, uh, the ground. It looks a little bit untidy. Uh, and then we're going to uh, save this away. So we just come back in, we just say give me a new view. So that is a view creation. I've picked an orientation for my parts, uh, an arrangement for them, and then I've said save that as a view. Now we're going to start uh, taking our cylinder apart, much the same as Ed did earlier on. So we're going to take our component, we're then going to translate it. And in this case, I want to translate it off towards the back there. We may also want to rotate the component. So we're going to choose that and we're going to rotate round. I need to go just under 180 degrees. And now I've finished that. I can say, well, I want a new view. So we're going to say new view. And then I can start looking at the difference between my uh, different views. So if we go back to view one and have a look at view two again, we can see our nut is spinning onto and off our model. Now, I might make, want to make that a little bit clearer, in which case what I can do is I can add uh, an arrow. So a circular arrow. Let's attach it to the outside of the nut. And we're going to grab it out there. Now we can see that that arrow is actually pointing in the wrong direction, so I can choose to change it the other way around. And then we can start looking at changing the size of the arrow. So we can make it bigger. I can also choose, and then because the arrow is attached to my component, if we update our view, we can come back and we can start to see the view and the arrow appear at the same time. So now I'm happy with that view, I can start moving on to the next one. Now this is going to again involve translation, this time we're going to take our bolt and we're going to move our bolt out and now we've got both of our items. So I'm going to create that as a second view and we can see over the whole movement we've got our first stage, we've got our second stage now in this second stage the arrow isn't very helpful so what I can actually say is in my second step I'm going to take the arrow we can come down to our markups and I can turn it off the same as I did with the floor earlier if I then update the view we can go through the progression again and we can see that the arrow fades away so we can continue building this up so in the next step what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my uh, cylinder assembly and I'm going to rotate it through a certain angle and I'm going to make the nuts and bolts disappear. So let's start working on that. So we're going to choose to rotate and I'm going to choose to rotate all of these items and then I'm going to choose what to rotate it around. So I press the Alt key and select a circular edge around the point I want to rotate it and then we can say let's rotate this up to here um, and again I'm going to create a new view. So now we've got that. Now there's two of the items here. One, you may notice I've left a couple of bits behind, so I'm going to need to grab hold of those. And two, I now need to get rid of my uh, my bolt and my screw, or my bolt and my nut, I should say, sorry. So we're going to select both of those, and then we can choose to right-click, and we're going to choose to hide that selection. Um, and then we're going to update our view again. So we've now got the first stage done. Now the second, what I need to do is I need to copy transformation to there, and repeat to there. So now we've updated those items as well. So we can now see our change from this position to our new position. We've moved those items up 
We now want to start uh, explaining this. So we've got two uh, washers or rubber bushes here, and then we've got a, a bushing down the center, and we want to see those explode. So we've got this option for a linear explode. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose uh, these two items. In fact, let's choose all three of them. Why not? And then we're going to drag those out. Now, when I've chosen three items, what's happened is the item the furthest away from the direction of moving stays stationary. So having selected all of those three, what I'm then going to do is I'm then going to translate the, all of them just a little bit back um, and then create a new view. And what you'll see is this gives a, an impression of movement like that in both directions. So now we have our third view. What we now need to do is we now need to start taking the nuts and bolts apart here. So exactly the same as before, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that nut and I'm going to translate it over that way. Uh, and then I'm going to rotate it. So we're going to grab the face and we rotate again to just below 180 degrees. That's lovely. We can then create a new view. Now we've got that position uh, started. I'm also going to hide some items the same as we did before. So we can see that those items are done and we're going to update our view. So each time I make a change, update the view. So now we've gone from here to there. Um, I'm going to take a bit of a shortcut. What we're going to do is we're going to move this bolt out in the same um, same step this time rather than doing it as two steps because we've already seen the work that needs to be done. So we're going to move that through. Again, we're going to update the view. And then finally, we need to add in uh, another arrow. So let's take our arrow. We'll take that, pop it here. We can make it a little bit larger. And the last step is, of course, to switch which end the arrow is on, the arrow head is on, because uh, otherwise it makes no sense and finally update the view. So we can then come back to how we were to begin with and we can check that everything looks okay. So now we're getting that whole movement. The next step of course will be to first of all hide these three items which have now been removed from my uh, from my assembly and then take everything else and we want to move it up. Now last time I forgot the bush in the middle so what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate around and select that as well. Now, I've made all this selection, but well, I want to go back to exactly my camera view before. I don't want to just sort of estimate it and say what well, it's about there. And this is why I had these saved cameras at the beginning. So if I come back to my saved camera, what I can say is don't save any changes, and it will return to the camera view as in before, and that then allows me to do the translation so everything appears from the same direction. So I'm going to move up to this point, and now I've hit everything I don't want. We can then say we want a new view. So our view is going from this point to here. We've got one more set of movement to do, which is going to be our linear explode. And we're going to come out. Oh, I've missed a component. There we go. We're going to come out in this direction. And again, we're just going to do that linear translate back that way so we have this in a uh, appearance of the bi-directional movement so we need a new view of that and then finally what we're going to do is we're going to hide these items and we're going to move our, our RAM off the screen in effect uh, just trying to show that it, everything's completely vanished and been removed so the final step select my three items we're going to hide these items it's gone. We're going to take our two items and then we're going to translate them off the screen. Now, in this case, I'm hitting the top of the screen. So, quite simply, use the control key and scroll, and we can see our paper space area here. And we're just going to shift those off because we because the idea is to remove the RAM. So, we're going to create a final view there. And then, if we come back, what we can do is we can go through. If I bring my paper my space back so this is our starting point we remove our first nut and then our first bolt we then twist everything up we start to remove the bushing 
we remove the other nut and bolt down from the, so the other nut and bolt from the other side. Again, we remove the bushing, and then finally, everything's removed away. So that's the process we've gone through just to show so, uh, a very simple removal process. Now we can actually uh, export this as a series of views, and we can put them on the web so people can follow them. You know, let's have a look at the series of steps I need to take in order to take this apart. We can also turn this into a, a video. Now the video. First of all, we're going to switch so that we're in animation mode um, and we get down the bottom, we get our, our video timeline. Now we can go through and move these around ourselves, but actually what we can do is we can say that at time zero, I want to see view one. And then every second, I want one of my views. It would help if I use seconds rather than half seconds. Every second, we want one of our uh, views to... Um, be used. So what happens is I just bring these down, put them on the timeline at the relevant locations. So again, in uh, you know, similar to SolidWorks, we're reusing the work we've already done basically. Um, and we just throw these all out. And view nine, which is at eight seconds. So we've now put in all of our views. I can hit play, and we can see what's going on here. And so you can see it's very easy to reuse the information and then obviously you can publish this as a video and I'll show you one of those in a little bit. So now we've seen the video, what we might want to do is create the bomb page as I talked about earlier. So first of all I'm going to come back, so I'm going to grab all of the bits involved. And I'm going to create a selection set, so this enables me to select things again. So I can then choose to hide this selection set, showing up the items I couldn't see before. Choose to hide these as well. Now you'll understand why these are and why I'm doing this order because I can then choose to invert visibility. So I'm left just with the things that I want. Now I can choose to remove the color from the background and then we can choose to reorient our model. So we can go to here or if we're a little bit uh, less sure, about um, how these are going to look. We can actually choose to turn the compass on and then choose to be on a particular plane, for example. So now I've got here, what I can do is I can choose to create a view. So I have a view like this, and then we can start doing some explodes again. So we're going to choose to take these two bolts. In fact, let's make this a linear explode. And we'll go this, this way. We're then going to do a translate of the bolt itself and if I decided that this isn't going to be the right size what I can do is I can just zoom it around um, to position everything so that I'm happy with it and again we can then try a linear explode of these items space those out nicely and then again a translate of this so I'm happy with that position and then I can repeat it uh, for the other side as well so again we're going to do linear explode get that item out to about the right position oh missed it so we'll bring that out and obviously if I'd done both sides at the same time everything had been arranged slightly neater but never mind. So linear explode again of this side would help if I use the control key to select everything. Bring that out and then a translate again of these three to here. So now we've got uh, some nice sort of layout. What we want to do is we want to start adding some bill of material information. in. So on the workshops tab we've got bill of materials. Um, before I go any further, I'm just going to update my view so that I don't lose what I've done. We now want to add in the bill of material. So what we can do is we can say apply to visible geometry. Let's generate bomb IDs. So if I do this, my various items get bomb IDs assigned. Um, we can then select all of our items and we can say generate callouts. And it will generate my callouts for the various different bits and pieces that I've got. Now in this case, um, we've actually gone and got uh, a sub-assembly or sorry we're generate the way we're generating is based on the uh, part numbering 
So this is comparing a property which is the part number. If I compare geometry, let's delete the callouts and reset the BOM IDs. Now I'm comparing by geometry. When I generate BOM IDs, I get some more numbers. So when I create callouts, I'll get more than just the two. <laughs> so we now have our six parts out. That's lovely, but what do these mean? Well, we can actually insert a um, bill of materials. So if we show a BOM table, now by default it's gone down to the bottom of the page. If what happens is we move this so it goes over and to the right where I've left some space for it, we can now get the uh, table up. So now what I want to do is put in some links to show some zoomed in views of things. So first of all, what we need to do is update the view to uh, show the new callouts. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to create another view um, which is just of, say, this, this rubber buffer. So first off, we select everything we don't want to see. Let's get rid of all of those. Let's get rid of these callouts as well. And I don't delete them. We always just hide things. So we're just going to hide everything there. And we're then going to rotate our rubber buffer around. And that's sort of a nice view of it. So we'll zoom in like that. Move it down a bit. And we're going to create a new view. So now we have our two views over here on the left. Now I want to be able to get between the two views. Well, the easiest way is if I control drag a view into the corner here, what happens is we get sort of a link um, to that view. Now that works beautifully going in this direction back to the main page. But to get to this buffer doesn't make a lot of sense. So what I'm going to do is first of all update that as we finished. Come back to this view. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select the buffer and we're going to add in an event. So the event, and we're going to link the click event to a URL of a view type. So we're going to say URL view and we're going to choose the view we want, which in this case is view 12, as signified here, and say OK. Now, I can't actually do too much with this um, here. Uh, what we need to do is take come out of design mode. So I come out of design mode and now when I come out of design mode if I click on this we change automatically to the other view and click on the view image and we go back again. So you can start to build up this sort of flexible manual that enables people to go backwards and forwards. Now from here I can also save out uh, an SVG which uh, looks as a web page and then that enables you to show. And I'm not going to do that right now because I want to show you some other bits and pieces. But we can also if I come back to my first view we can also start saving this information out into new types. So we talked about videos, and I talked about this F SVG, which can go on a website, um, which enables you to highlight various bits and pieces. But we also have uh, ways of bringing out a high-resolution image. Um, we can then also bring out technical illustrations, which would be line drawings. And um, I'm going to jump back into my PowerPoint to show you some of these. So the first one we've got is uh, a high-resolution image, um, which has got all the bits, all the bells and whistles on it. We've then also got what's called the technical publication, which is a flat, which is supposed to look like a line drawing or a hand drawing. We've then got a video, and this is one I produced um, separately elsewhere. And you can see very similar idea to what we did here um, in this lesson. Um, and going through and then going off. Um, we also have uh, an image from the SVG, similar sort of idea to what I did, but I've also got the SVG open in the background here. And the reason I want to show you this is you can see now why I call this a, an ordering assistance or a bomb page, um, because it enables you to highlight things. I instantly see that there's four of them. The line highlights on the uh, bill of materials, and everything's multi-directional. So if I select it in the bill of materials, it selects it in the graphic. If I select it in the graphic, it selects it in the bill of materials. And if I select the balloon, again, it does the other two. So you can see it's very useful for that sort of uh, page. And again, we can build this up into a fuller website. Didn't quite have enough time to show you that here. And so that's that's composed a very brief introduction. It's very powerful. Again, it allows a lot of reuse. Some really nice elements of it is if I went and changed my model, all I'd do is come back to my, S, uh, my SMG, my composer files, and just say update them to the latest geometry, and they'd all change. Um, so I don't have to rebuild this every time there's a new design. Uh, it just gets done for me uh, with a very simple update click. So thank you very much for watching.